If you're a big tree, I'm going to cut you down. I'm come to cut you down, J.D. Nigel, word of truth. If you're a big, big tree, then I'm a small axe, ready to cut you down. I'm going to cut you down. Welcome, believers. Welcome, Israel. It's J.D. Nigel, Word of Truth. Bible teaching, Bible lessons. With J.D. Nigel, Jeff Deloach. From beautiful Doheny State Beach, October 26, 2022. No waves. Bible teaching, good time to teach the Bible. Heavenly Father, bless this message through your only begotten Son, who you sent to spread the word of your love for us and to reconcile us back to you through the Holy Spirit, the power, wisdom, and knowledge of this book, through this book, of the word, through the word, of your will and your plan and your love for us and your provision and your protection. Protect the ears that hear it. Love them, give them comfort, make them understand your word and your will. Amen. So the last message we're talking about, these people that are teaching the Bible all mixed up. The Bible's not really that difficult if you really just read it for what it says. Um, and stop trying to figure out what it means. Just read it for what it says. And then ask the Lord, it sounds like this is going on. And then you read the, the captions below and you, you kind of figure out what people are saying. And you can say, I think they're right, but they got that wrong. And then you search around and you figure out, ah, they're kind of leading me astray on that one. Um... um so we're talking about Saul rebelling against the Lord and losing his anointing, not his Holy Spirit anointing. He was anointed as king. He had a special job to do and he lost the spirit departed from him of the anointing of king. You dumb black Hebrew Israelites that don't understand simple verbiage, simple spiritual these are, this is, this is Israelite 101. This is simple stuff. If you're, if you're Israel, this shouldn't be hard for you to get. This isn't, this isn't rocket science. science. It says down here, Saul's actions were a clear violation of the divine sanctions against Amalek. Who's Amalek? From what we know, it's the 1948ers over there, but I'm not pointing fingers at anyone. I'm, I'm saying I know I'm Israel. I don't know who else is Israel. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not saying, oh, Edomites are this, Israel's them, blacks, Hebrews, blah, blah, blah. I, All I know is I am. If you're claiming you are, prove it. GMS, prove that you're Israel. Stop your nonsense. Stop your niggardly... Um, Ang angry, um, racist ways. You guys are a bunch of racists. You're making me racist because I'm starting to hate, hate, hey, 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 on you. Um, so let's go into it. Saul's actions were a clear violation of the divine sanctions against Amalek. God's regret is an expression drawn from human experience. Yet the Lord was Doubtless grieved because of Saul's disobedience. The Lord wasn't, it made him sad that Saul didn't listen. He wanted Saul to succeed. He gave him the anointed. He wanted Saul to succeed. He was grieved because of Saul's disobedience. However, such anthropo anthropomorphisms do not indicate weakness or changeability in the divine will. What's that mean? He's not going anywhere. He's going to be there. He's going to actually be on the shoulder of David. He's going to be on his right hand. 
putting forth justice and righteousness, the law. He's in, he's going to be the governor. Saul and Benjamin are going to be the governors of Judah. You, you guys just don't get it. Um, once again, Saul the sinner attempts to shift the blame to others or plead extenuating cir circumstances. The practices are as old as sin itself. It's nothing new, people. I didn't do it. Not my fault. No, blip. It was it was Eve. Goes all the way back to Adam and Eve. She, the woman made me eat. She's the one that. Come on, man. Come on, sir. Disgusting, to to have that kind of pride. Oh, I, I, well, it's not me. I'm spiritual life lessons. We we don't do GMS anymore. We're all about the Holy Spirit and uh, the, the Brotherhood, man. Stupid idiots. Sorry, slock you. So, uh, let's see what it says right here. And Samuel came to Saul. This is 15, 1 Samuel 15, 13. And so I've taught this before and I'll teach it again. The blessing that Moses gave to Benjamin, the tribe of Benjamin, he said, you're the chosen of the Lord. You will rest safely on his shoulder. Oh, darn it. But anyway, it's the, he's the chosen of the Lord. You will rest on the shoulder safely all the days of his life. So let me read this to you so you can get the feel, get the taste of it. Samuel rebuked Saul. 1 Samuel 15, 13. And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord, I have performed the commandment of the Lord. And Samuel said, What? meaneth this bleeding of the sheep in mine ears and the low, lowing of the oxen that I hear. And Saul said, I have brought them from the Amalekites. And that's where he gets in trouble and Saul goes, you, you're screwed. Samuel said, when you were little in thine own sight, wast thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel. Who, who anointed Saul? King. The Lord. Who took the anointing away? The Lord. Where'd the anointing go? On to David. Did David did David touch the Lord's anointed? Once a man is anointed by the Lord, no other man can can say he's not anointed. Is any man gonna be able to take my anointing away? The only, the only one that could take my anointing away is the Lord himself. Tahar and these guys can say whatever they want about me. They're going to lose as long as I stay anointed, as long as I don't screw up. But even if I do screw up, it's not up to them to say I'm anointed or not. They better shut the hell up. That's what this is saying. They're breaking the law. They're breaking the law of Israel. You, as a man, have no right to say anything about the Lord's anointed. As far as David was concerned, he was still king. Almost till the end. Till, till the point Saul died, David still considered himself a servant of Saul. And that's why these black Hebrew Israelites, they can't be Israel, because they don't understand that. That's an Israelite law. That's a commandment. That's a precept, dudes. And Samuel said, When thou wast little in thine own eyes, wast thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel. He was king. So let's go over here. After he gets troubled by spirits, um, the evil spirit from God is upon thee, that he shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be well. So David, they sought David because David was supposed to play the harp and to calm Saul, Saul down and make him realize you're not the you're not anointed king anymore. Calm down, dude. 
chill. And Saul said unto his servant, Provide me now a man that can play well and bring him to me. Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen the son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, Bethlehem Ephrata. Back to the family. Let's let's get it back to the family. We have we have one of the very chosen, the one of Bethlehem Ephrata, the one where Jesus came from, the one where Benjamin came from, the one where Saul came from, the one where Samuel came from, David, all of them. This is the royal family, people. Saul's part of the royal family spiritual life lessons, you knuckleheads. Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse at the Bethlehemite that is cunning and plain, and a mighty valiant man, and a man of war, and prudent in matters, and a comely person, and the Lord is with him. And Saul summons David. Whereas Saul sent messengers unto Jesse and said, Send me David thy son, which is with the sheep. And Jesse took an ass and brought David to Saul and stood before him, and he loved him greatly, and he became his armor bearer. And David came to Saul and stood before him, and he loved him greatly, and he became his armor bearer. Really, GMS? Really spiritual life lessons? Are you that lame? You keep saying the same stupid shit. And no matter how many times I correct you, you're not, you're not going to open the book. Are you going to listen to one of my videos? I could call you out a hundred times. You're still going to be witchcraft. You're rebellious. You have no ability to listen to anyone else but your own wicked, vain imaginations. People, let this be a lesson to you. Do not... Think that what you think is always right. The reason I'm so good at this, because the Lord said, J.D. Nyjah, I like the way you doubt everything you think. And you wait, and you wait, and you wait, and you wait till I tell you. And then when I tell you, you listen. That's why I'm anointed. I, I can think a lot of, I've thought a lot of weird things about this book in, in my time. But I was thinking, and I was looking, and I would I would go back and go, I, I used to think that. I wonder if that's true. Let me look it up. And you go back, and you go back, and you go back. You're constantly trying to get the truth to, to blossom out of this, this word. These guys don't, they're not studying. I told them, you guys need to study. You guys need to study a little bit more before you start teaching because your teaching is not right your teaching is wrong but do they listen no so what's it say and david came to saul and stood before him and he loved him greatly and he became his armor bearer and saul sent to jesse saying let david i pray thee stand before me for he has found favor in my sight and it came to pass when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul that David took a harp and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. If this was up to spiritual life lessons, they would have um, hit Saul over the head with the harp and put his head through the strings like a cartoon. We hate you, Saul. <sighs> it's not how David reacted. David loved Saul, you Dumb it. So I was over here in, um, where was I? Um, talking about Jonathan. Um, and when the, this is First Samuel 17, this is a couple pages over. Um, I think I was in 18 that was really interesting. So, who did David? Who did David marry? Let's just go here. I'm not going to go. I'm, Saul sends for David. David arms himself. Um, this is about Goliath and and David standing up and all that to Goliath and slaying him. Um, a covenant of souls. Let's go here because this is this is how we can. Break this witchcraft that these guys are doing. Um, 
who is the whose son is this? And when Saul saw David go forth against the Philistine, he said unto Abner, the captain of the host, whose son is this? And Abner says, as the soul liveth, O king, I cannot tell. And the king said, inquire that thou whose son the stripling is. And David returned from the slaughter of the Philistine. Abner took him and brought him before Saul with the head of the Philistine in his hand. And Saul said unto him, whose son art thou, thou young man? And David answered, I am the son of thy servant, Jesse, the Bethlehemite. How many times do they make that point? That is a, that is a name of power. That is a place of power. That is a place of renown. That is a place of anointing. That is a place of the families of Israel. A covenant of souls. 1 Samuel 18.1 And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Jonathan's the son of day of Saul, people. What's it say? Their souls were knitted together. How many times have I said this? Judah and Benjamin are of one type. We are of the same family. We're of the same flesh of the flesh, blood of blood. We're the these Negroes, man. These they're the only ones I ever hear saying this crap. Saul's bad? Who says that? Even the churches don't say that. Even the churches understand, church pastors understand Israel better than better than these guys that claim to be Israel. I never hear the church pastors saying, oh, Saul was wicked. David hated Saul. Saul had to be put down. Saul lost the Holy Spirit. You guys are letting the Christians out Bible you? Pathetic. Pathetic. You guys must be agents. Spiritual life lessons. GMS. You guys got to be agents. You got to be. You got to be agents of Satan or agents of the system, one or the other. Because there's no way you guys could be that far off base and not. I, I'm in your face constantly, but you guys don't turn. You people that are listening, my friends, my my believers, my what my my people, you need to get on these guys and say, you need to you need to wake up, man. You want to learn something? Listen to JD Nige. He'll he'll tell you the truth. He'll he'll set you straight. What you can't take a few cuts? You can't change your you can't change your ways and repent and say, damn, this guy's Israel. We thought he was an Edomite. No, this guy's Israel. They, they don't know it. They can't feel it. They don't have it. They're lost. What's it saying? It came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. They were married. They're one flesh. They're soul to soul. You guys are stupid. And Saul took him that day and would not let him go no more home to his father's house. What did he do? He said, you're coming with me. And Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him and gave it to David and his garments, even to the sword and to his bow and to his girdle. You guys cannot be Israel spiritual life lessons if you don't know what the family is. You're not part of the family. You're not Israel, dudes. GMS, you're not Israel either. You guys are Edomites. You got to be Edomites. You're some kind of wicked pricks because you keep saying the same stuff, even though there's people out here like myself, anointed people that are, are trying to get you straightened out. You won't, you won't straighten out. You're crooked as a crooked stick in the in the road. You're crooked as a, a a wrong path. Makes me sick. And David went out whithersoever Saul sent him. And wow. And David went out whithersoever Saul sent him. 
and behaved himself wisely. And Saul set him over the men of war, and he was accepted in the sight of all the people and also in the sight of Saul's servants. We're all together now, people. Saul lost the Holy Spirit. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah, you don't want to be like Saul lost the Holy Spirit. What? What? <sighs> Saul's daughter given to David. Just because Saul didn't behave himself wisely didn't mean he wasn't any good. I'm going to I'm going to close this one out. I'm going to take a walk. I uh, I don't want to get angry. Today's my day to relax. Today's my day to just chill out here and and enjoy my time with the Lord. And David went out whithersoever Saul sent him. Do you guys get it? You guys, the spiritual life lessons, you guys really do need to be quiet. Just, just stop. I'm going to do this one real quick. Um, Saul's daughter given to David. And Saul said to David, Behold, my elder daughter Merab, her will I give thee to wife, only to be thou valiant for me, and fight the Lord's battles. For Saul said, Let not my hand be upon him, let the hand of the Philistines be upon him. And David said unto Saul, Who am I, and what is my life, or my father's family in Israel, that I should be son-in-law of the king? Do I have to, how, how many times do I have to do this? What did David say? What? You're going to make me? You're going to give your daughter to me? You are going to give your daughter to me? Really? Who am I? That's how we are in of Bethlehem, of Frati, you knuckleheads. We're not, we're not saying anything proud about anyone. We're the least of the tribes of, of Israel. The least of the tribes of Israel. The least of the tribes of Israel. But the most powerful. And you guys are, are trying to break that bond. You can't break that bond. David, King David's going to take your own heads and cut them off with Saul's sword. This is what's probably going to happen to you dumbasses. Sorry, believers. I'm, I'm, you guys need to help me get these guys straight. Either that or just push them in the corner where they can't move anymore. They're, they're moving against our people, man. You got to see them as enemies. They're not our friends. And it came to pass at the time when Merab, Saul's daughter, should have been given to David, that she was given unto Adriel the Mah Maholathite to wife. And Michael, Saul's daughter, loved David, and they told Saul, and the thing pleased him. And Saul said, I will give him her, that she may be a snare to him, and that the hand of the Philistine may be against him. Wherefore Saul said to David, Thou shalt this day be my son-in-law with one of the twain. And Saul commanded his servant, saying, Commune with David secretly. And behold, he gave David Micah, David took Micah in good faith. And he met, he made a big mess with the dowry with the Philistines and he was de he did wickedly. Yeah, he did. Does that mean you have anything to say about it? Spiritual life lessons? No. Does that mean I have anything to say about it? No. That was the first anointed king of Israel. So shut the hell up and stay on your square, you kooks. J.D. Nijah, I love you, believers. I love you, Israel. You guys need to help me fight these guys, man. I, they, need to, they need to hear it so many times from so many different people that they can't even make another video without addressing it. These guys need to address it. Get into the book, people. <laughs> J.D. Nigel, I'm out.